but I'm really here as, as chair of the advisory council. And with that, uh, I get to say welcome to Bernie. Uh, I'm acting as master ceremonies, but Bernie Innes, as the director of OSEP, will be giving the opening remarks. Bernie. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the sixth annual public policy conference of the Ontario Centre for Engineering and Public Policy. Like its predecessors, this conference is part of a widespread effort by P Professional Engineers Ontario to get engineers engaged in public pol policy dialogues and in politics. Um, in this, PEO is not alone. Uh, Engineers Canada, the National Association for Provincial Regulators, has prepared position papers on several issues, including climate change. The advocacy group Ontario Society for Professional Engineers has its political action network, regularly makes representations at public forums, and has produced several public policy position papers on topics from energy to transit to workplace equity. Several university engineering departments have recently added programs on courses in policy. It seems that engineers have suddenly become aware that they can become part of this sphere of influence. Given the nature of politics, uh, this is a strange development. Nearly 70 years ago, the political philosopher Michael Oakeshott, um, in a critique of modern politics, claimed that politics had been assimilated by engineering. It had become, he said, fixated on problem solving, and those who practice the political arts from a standpoint of a moral and classical education had been replaced by technocrats who based decisions solely on rational computation. If this is the case, if politics has indeed become a branch of engineering, then it's really uh, puzzling why engineers have uh, feel disconnected from policy making activities. Uh, this is especially puzzling since so many of the problems faced by society, from economic development to climate change, require or would be mitigated by an engineering uh, intervention. Of course, policymakers do rely on engineers to provide the data and information needed to support policy options. Yet those options are typically formulated well in advance of any engagement on the issue by engineers, even though an engineering perspective could often fundamentally alter the understanding of the problem. Could it be that the en engineering ethos of service to society, of being able to produce what others want or need, means engineers are less likely to be critics and problem generators? And possessing a critical attitude towards the existing state of affairs is a crucial factor in understanding what needs policy consideration. Through events such as this conference, OSEP encourages professional engineers to participate in policy making, especially at the issue identification and problem definition stage, where input from engineers would have the most impact. To ask questions and question the answers rather than proceed directly to problem solving. We have put together an exciting conference intended to solicit questions. Throughout the day, practitioners, academics, and government policymakers will consider three issues of great concern to Ontarians on which engineers need to be engaged. I hope you will join the dialogue and I look forward to a conference that will enlighten and educate all, of, all who take part. But before I leave the podium, I'd like to thank our conference sponsors, Engineers Canada, the overall sponsor, Ontario Power Generation, the visibility sponsor, and Consulting Engineers Ontario, the break sponsor. Their generous support and assistance was very important in making this conference possible. And now, I'm very pleased to, to introduce David Euler, Vice Chair of OSEP's Advisory Board, who will introduce our first keynote speaker. Thanks, Bernie. Good morning. What if 2014 was the year of a regional awakening where our municipal leaders 
unified in their determination to work together, address key regional challenges such as gridlock, jobs, and the gap between rich and poor. Its time is long past due. In a region of six million people, a growing proportion of us increasingly leads city regional lives. We routinely cross